rejection, not hitting a goal, whether it's, you know, barely failing at the $100,000 goal or failing at the 10K goal is actually the same. It can actually be the same amount of hurt, the same amount of I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough if you're not doing it properly. All right. How's it going, everybody? Xander Fryer, CEO and founder of High Impact Coaching, uh, best-selling author. I hope you guys have missed me. I hope everybody's been having a great holiday. Uh, and today, today, I wanted to talk to you guys uh, about yearly review planning and give you guys an exercise that, that we do with every single one of our clients and I myself do. Um, because frankly, I think there's so many coaches out there that, you know, they come to us and they're always telling us like, you know, Xander, I'm not hitting my goals uh, you know, I'm making, I'm, I'm setting all these big visions, these big goals, but I'm not, I'm not actually hitting any of them, or maybe I'm hitting a couple, but I'm missing a large majority of them. And you're wondering why you're wondering why you're not actually hitting these goals. And, you know, frankly, one of the most disappointing things in the entire world, uh, and I know you, I, I know you can relate to this, but um, one of the most disappointing things in the entire world is setting goals, right? Is setting goals and then not being able to hit those goals or not hitting those goals. This is, this is one of the major reasons why uh, so many people don't set goals is, is actually because of how disappointing it is when you don't hit those goals, right? So that's, it's, it's crazy, but you know, you always hear things like, um, you know, I'd rather, <coughs> I'd rather set a, a goal to hit uh, $100,000 and hit $90,000 than set a goal to hit $10,000 and hit 12, right? But to your subconscious rejection, not hitting a goal, whether it's you know barely failing at the hundred thousand dollar goal or failing at the ten k goal, is actually the same. It can actually be the same amount of hurt, the same amount of I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough if you're not doing it properly, right? Now, what this leads to, what this leads to, is a lot of people either uh, having a fear of setting goals or not setting goals properly or not being able to hit those goals for certain reasons. And I want to go through why that actually is with you guys today. So I was talking to one of my mentors uh, and he said, and he was working with a lot of his clients and he's like, Xander, you know, I, I tell, you know, all my clients are, all, all my clients are setting these amazing goals and blah, 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 this and that, but they're not getting results. They're not getting there, right? They're setting these goals, but why aren't they getting these results? And I asked him, I said, why well, are they, are they constantly reviewing the actions they've taken and are they constantly checking out where, you know, where they went wrong in actually getting to those goals? And he said, well, well, no, a lot of them aren't, right? So one of the biggest problems that we have when it comes to actually hitting our goals is not that we don't set the goals. I mean, in the, you know, in the self-development space, everybody knows that we need to set goals. Everybody knows that, um, you know, you're 50% you're more likely to achieve a goal if you write it down and record it. You're another 50% more likely to achieve a goal if you hold yourself publicly accountable for it, right? But the truth is, most people set goals and they still hold themselves accountable and everything like that, but they're missing one key component, which is reviewing. Reviewing how you got to where you are. See, we all know that failure can actually be a good thing. Failure can lead to success, but only if after every failure, we learn from it. We go back and we review what we did wrong and why we did that wrong so that we can move forward and change it. See, the truth is, if you don't review your failures, right? And by the way, reviewing your failures are never fun. Nobody likes reviewing failures, right? Nobody likes to take a deep, hard look at why they sucked at something, why they didn't get the results that they wanted to get, right? Is, is that fun to you? Is that fun to look back and be like, oh, I didn't hit this goal and I didn't hit this goal and I didn't hit this one. No, that's painful, right? But the truth is when you, when you have the willingness to sit through that pain and take a deep, hard look at why you didn't get to where you want to get to, you can change it, right? The analogy that I always use, right? It's like, if you're a, if you were in a deep, dark room, if you were in a deep, dark room and you knew there was a bunch of scary shit in that room, but all the lights were off, right? You're scared to turn on the lights because you know, there's a bunch of shit that you don't want to see in that room right? These are, these are your mistakes. These are your failures. These are your shortcomings, right? The things that you didn't do well. And you're scared to turn on that light because you don't want to admit to all of those shortcomings. 
right? Because if you admit to those shortcomings, that means you're not good enough. But the truth is, if you flipped on the lights and took a, took a deep, hard look around that room at all of your shortcomings, all of your failures, all of your problems, all of your mistakes, all the things that you did wrong, you could then start to fix them. You can move those things out of the room so that you can clean up this space and get moving forward properly from then on, right? So the biggest and one of the most important things that we need to, reduce, we need to do when we set the intentions for our next year and our, our goals is to review the last year. Review, you know, review the, the 12 months prior so that when you're moving forward, you're not going to make the same mistakes. You don't want to make the same mistakes, right? Albert Einstein says, uh, you know, insanity is, is, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So many people do this because you're not willing to sit there in the negativity and take a hard look at what you did wrong. So I want to give everybody a quick exercise. I want to give everybody a quick exercise to review their year. You know, it's the end of, end of 2019, going into 2020. I want to give everybody a quick exercise to review your year and really get ready for the new year so that you can make this new year the best of your life. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to ask you a series of, of five questions, series of five questions about 2018 or sorry, about 2019. Uh, and then and a couple of questions around 2020 to really get you moving on this. And this is a great little exercise for everybody as they get rolling. So question number one. So we're going to start looking back by at December 2018. Look back at December 2018. And I just want you to ask yourself, where were you? Where were you one year ago? Where were you one year ago in your life, in your business, in your relationships? Where were you one year ago? Now, this is really important because we want to see, we want to see where you were one year ago, because even though sometimes it's hard to see how much you've grown, I guarantee that you've grown. I guarantee that you've moved forward in different areas of your life. I guarantee that you've gotten better. Where were you one year ago, right? Where were you one year ago in your business? Where were you in your relationships? Where were you physically? Where were you in your personal life one year ago? Then you need to ask yourself, who were you? in December of 2018. Who were you one year ago? That's question number two. You know, maybe you were an amateur, maybe you were dabbling, maybe you were still in a nine to five, maybe you still are in a nine to five, right? Maybe you're, you're, you're lost and confused and you're working on getting clarity. Who were you, right? Maybe you're an amateur, maybe you were a decent leader, maybe you were a good friend, a good husband or a good wife, right? Who were you one year ago? And then you need to ask yourself, here are, the, here are the big, scary questions. What has changed? What has changed in the last year for you? What has changed, both good and bad? Right? Maybe you've moved forward in some things. Maybe, maybe, you've, uh, you know, maybe you've gotten better at your coaching business. Maybe you've gotten a certification. Whatever it is, what has changed for you? But then ask yourself, what hasn't? What hasn't changed for you? What's still going on in your life that hasn't changed, that you know needs to? Maybe you, you still, you're still not coaching full time. Maybe you're not where you need to be spiritually. Maybe your relationship's not where it needs to be. Maybe you as a leader have not grown enough. Maybe you're not having as much fun as you want to. And then ask yourself, where are you now because of it? Where are you now because of it? And I want you to be honest with these questions, right? Where are you now because of it? Maybe you haven't grown. Maybe you're still in a nine to five, right? Maybe, you're, maybe you've gotten a couple of clients, but you're just dabbling on the side and you haven't been able to go full time. Maybe you know you need to grow more personally, as a leader, as a business owner, right? Where were you in December 2018? Who were you in December 2018? What has changed since then? What hasn't? And where are you now because of it? All right. Ask yourself those five questions when you're reviewing this last year and be honest with yourself. Be brutally honest with yourself because the more brutally honest you can be, the quicker you can start to change things. And then once you've done that, I want you to take a quick review or sorry, I want to take you, uh, take you on a quick review to set goals for 2020. All right. So let's take a look ahead at December 2020 now, one year from now, the end of December 2020. 
right? Now ask yourself, where do you want to be? Where do you need to be December, 2020? Maybe you're going full time. Maybe your goal is six figures in your coaching business. Maybe it's multiple six figures. Maybe it's a million dollars, half a million, whatever it is. Being more comfortable and confident in your business, growing and scaling, speaking on stages, right? Maybe you want to have some money in the bank saved up to buy a home, taking time off this year, spending weekends with the family, more time in the evenings. Where do you want to be one year from now? Where do you want your business to be? Where do you want your relationships to be? And then who do you have to be for that to come true? We all know that for you to have more, you have to become more. The biggest thing that holds you back in your life and in your business right now is you. And this is why it's difficult to take a look back at what you haven't accomplished, right? Because the truth is, it means that you personally have not grown as much as you need to. So who do you have to be one year from now? to have the business and the life and the impact that you wanna have. The leader you were meant to be, the spiritual powerhouse you were meant to be, a showman, uh, an influencer, a phenomenal uh, you know, impact and world changer. Who do you have to be? What are your communication skills, your business skills, your sales, your marketing skills? And what do you have to do to fill the gap, right? So where do you want to be? Where do you need to be more, more apparently, yeah. Who do I have to be and what do I have to do to fill the gap? What are the action steps that I need to take to fill the gap between where I am now and where I need to be at the end of 2020? What do I have to do to fill the gap? Maybe you have to read more. Maybe you have to hire mentorship. Maybe you have to work on meditating more. Maybe you have to get, get out of your own comfort zone. Maybe you have to put yourself out there, put more content out there. Maybe you have to commit to this 100% because you know that committing 99% is not going to get you there. Maybe you have to stop living in, the, in, in fear. Maybe you have to start living purposefully. And what is your theme for 2020? What is your theme for 2020? Maybe it's getting out of your comfort zone. Maybe it's, maybe it's uh, you know, becoming the leader I need to be. What is the theme for 2020 for you? And once you have those four questions, where do you want to be December, 2020? Who do you have to be December, 2020? What do you have to do to fill the gap to get there? And what's your theme for 2020? You've now done a great job in just five, 10, 15 minutes to review last year, make sure you're not gonna make the same mistakes and set goals for 2020 so that you can start to move forward intentionally. Now, the reason I wanted to share this with you guys is because myself and Maddie and a lot of our clients you know, over the last two years, I actually checked in on this. Over the last three years now, over the last three years, I've hit about 80% of every goal that I set. About 80% of every goal that I set. And this is with some big, crazy-ass goals that I've set over the last three years, right? Stuff like, uh, you know, when I first quit my job, you know, building a seven-figure business in less than, uh, less than a year. Hitting that. Doing a TED Talk. Um, you know, when I, was, when I was first getting my business up and running, um, you know, speaking in front of, you know, uh, you know, dozens and hundreds of people ho hosting my first event for, for 300 people. Um, you know, everything, even personal life stuff, finding a girlfriend, which then turned into a fiance, right? So, um, you know, moving to Encinitas, our dream home on the beach in Encinitas, overlooking the beach in Encinitas, right? I've hit about 80% of every single, uh, every single goal that I've set, having a team of over 10 people now. Uh, taking, you know, certain amounts of time off, um, you know, during my business, going to Tulum, going to Australia, going to Greece and Italy, right? Doing all of these things. I've hit almost 80% of every single goal that I've set. And one of the major reasons for that is because every single year I'm reviewing the 20% that I don't hit and I'm figuring out why I didn't hit those goals so that I can get better at hitting bigger goals moving forward, Right? I want everybody to remember this because the truth is you didn't sign up for impact or you didn't sign up for easy. You signed up for impact. All right. I love you guys. Enjoy this exercise. You can do this more than just once a year. I actually do this every six months or so, but you can do this more than once a year. It's going to radically change your growth pattern in your business, right? I love you. I'll chat with you all soon.